Classical consumer theory depends on the existence of preferences, which materialize into utility functions. The issue is that it is difficult to accept that individuals really have a definite mathematical formula in mind when choosing between different options. What revealed preference theory does is work backwards to assume that we can deduce these utility functions from consumer behavior. Analyzing these choices leads us backwards to a set of preferences that influence the choices they make. It therefore allows economists to study consumer behavior empirically. The x-axis or horizontal axis shows the amount of good x1 a consumer can consume, while the y-axis or vertical axis shows the amount of x2 this consumer can consume. However, we know that the amount that the individual consumes is subject to a budget constraint, such as the one labeled BC1, which goes from one axis to the other. All points that lie inside the area of the budget constraint line area are different bundles of goods between both goods. However, only those points that are situated at the exact budget constraint line are entirely using the whole budget. This way, point A represents a bundle in which all of the budget is used, contrary to point B. Since A contains more good, at the given prices and given the budget constraint, A is preferred to B. In this case, we say A is revealed as preferred to B, using what we call the weak axiom of revealed preference. If A is revealed as preferred to B, then it must be so in every case. That is, if a consumer ever chooses B, then we must assume that A was previously chosen and that the budget constraint had enough left over to allow a consumer to choose B as well. Point C represents a bundle of goods that is not attainable given the current budget constraint. Now, let's see what happens if the budget constraint changes. Let's say this happens because the price of good x1 increases and the price of good x2 drops. Considering this new budget constraint and the weak axiom of revealed preference, we know that both bundles B and C are preferred to bundle A. However, it seems impossible to determine whether B is preferred to C or vice versa. In order to solve this dilemma, we use what we call the strong axiom of revealed preference, which adds transitivity. This axiom adds the idea of indirectly revealing preferences if C is chosen over A, and A over B, as we saw in the first example, transitivity dictate that C is also preferred to B. We say that C is indirectly revealed to be preferable to B. In theory, we can track this backwards to actually build utility functions if we have access to unlimited data. Without actually having to do this, we can aggregate consumer data to reveal general truths about a certain population's preferences, which will determine the utility maximization process.